respect to God and the presence of his spirit. We give the highest honor to our presiding bishop and chief apostle of the Church of God in Christ, the Bishop J. Drew Sheard, and to the presidium of our church, to all of the bishops and to the leadership of New Life, to all of my family who is present on tonight. It is with intense gratitude and with the covering of grace and the magnitude of support received that I rise to give deference to God who is our savior and whose strength I reside. Likewise, it is in this strength that I find my resolve in the book of John that I must work the work of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. The hour of the day has come, and the work herein will continue as David gave Solomon instructions to keep the charge of the Lord, to walk in his ways as the love of a father. It is the foundation of evolution and the essence of creation. The love of a son is the continuation of a promise inheritance. My father bequeathed to me the foundation of the gospel and in his reverent delivery of the word, I was developed. Our bond was forged in the fires of affliction. Our bond was forged in the fire of dedication. Our fire was forged in the fire and the bond of sacrifice. He was my model, and without the frame of his light, the world is dimmer, but my purpose is clear, as his instructions are my path. We rest tonight in the greatness that he was, we live in the distinction of his work, and we reflect on the potency of his legacy. He leaves behind the excellence of preaching, the evidence of a scholar practitioner who valued the supremacy of the word, confidently believing in the hope of glory. He bravely took on new challenges as he proclaimed new life. He produced new life, continued and cultivated new life, developed new life. So it must be by divine prominence that we have gathered here at New Life to face now our new life. A new life without his poignant direction and guidance. A new life without his soul-stirring preaching. A new life without his courage, love, and loyalty. Yet a new life that he created. Just as the disciples also faced the dim prospects of a new life without Jesus, John captured the moment as Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. As we move in this new life, we carry the treasure of our heritage, a wealth of wisdom and a courage of commitment. I move in his legacy. Within my bones and in his voice is the tenor of my voice. And even the melanin in his skin. I am the son he created. I am the son who became the preacher that I am. I am the son that became the man who can finish the work that he started. Now to cherish what remains is this Hutchins family, the graceful bishop's wife, the Dr. Katrina Hutchins, the two beloved grandchildren, my two beloved children, Jordan Elise, who was the darling of his heart, his namesake, Derek Wayne Hutchins III, his siblings, three brothers living and two sisters, all of you, my extended aunts, uncles, 
brothers and sisters that extend throughout the church of God in Christ and beyond. If there were two words I can share tonight, it would be thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you. Thank you for the memories. Thank you for allowing us to share this great man of God as we heal in our brokenness and rejoice in the blessing God gave us in the person of Bishop Derek W. Hutchins. I want to close simply with this word that I heard as I was driving just three weeks prior to coming Thanksgiving weekend. I was planning to come on Saturday so that I would preach for him on Sunday. But the Lord dropped in my spirit to come on Friday. And it was on Friday morning that I called my father and shared with him, I'm coming early because I want to spend a little more time with you. I came in on that Friday night, about 8.30 at night. And as I walked out of the security area, my father was standing in the airport. I said, why would you not wait in your Porsche on the curb? Why wouldn't you just let me know that you're around? He said, but this is my son. This is Derek Wayne Hutchins II. Then as we got into the drive, we shared pleasantries of how great it was to see one another. He said, what would you like to eat, son? I said, well, I just eat wherever you want to go. We're in Orlando. He said, well, we'll go eat. He pulled up in Chick-fil-A. I said, Bishop, Dad, um, we are not in Utahville anymore. We're not in Orangeburg anymore. We're not in Chattanooga. We're not in Louisville. We're not in Orlando. We're not even in Venezuela. Why would we come to Chick-fil-A? He said to me, well, that's where I ate early. I said, well, let's just have breakfast in the morning. But then we shared all day long and continued in wonderful conversation all day and then on Sunday I shared and then after worship we went to the office and he went through almost every photo album in his office the same picture behind his chair of Bishop C.H. McClellan is the same picture of Bishop C.H. McClellan in his office the same pictures that show the life and the legacy of this great council of pastors and elders and every church that he's pastored and every opportunity that was afforded. He shared with me so many wonderful memories from one page after the other. As we left toward the airport, he again pulled up to the curb. Not only did he bring me to the airport, but he parked in valet. And he said, I'm going to walk you in because this is Derek Hutchins. And on that moment, we shared dinner at Macaroni Grill. I said, Dad, I really don't know why we have to eat here. He said, well, this is the closest thing, and I don't have my pass to walk through security. But I want to have dinner with you one more time before you leave. Not only did we share, he had pasta, I had pizza. I was full and then he wanted dessert and you all that know Bishop know he likes his dessert with his meal. We split a cheesecake and just continued to talk and after the meal he followed me to the security. It's almost as if he didn't want to let me go and I didn't want to let him go. After the 41 years I've enjoyed him, these last 15 years or so every time we departed we would both flood with tears because we didn't know when we'd see each other again. But he kissed me on the cheek and I kissed him on the forehead. He said, let's go take a couple days before the end of the year or at least the beginning of the year. Wherever you want to go, we'll go for three days. But just last weekend, as we heard his voice, as Derek and I share, as every weekend we call him as we do to just encourage him and to just love him and thank him. He said, son, I've never been this sick before. I'm weak, but I love you. 
I said, please don't go to church tomorrow. He said, I'm not going to go to church. Rose is going to preach tomorrow. He continued to share with me and Dr. K continued to communicate with me. And then on Monday, he said, son, all is well. Don't worry about coming tonight. It's an overnight stay. I'll be coming out of here in the morning. And in the morning, when he rose, Jesus was there waiting for him. And I can just hear that song saying, when I get inside, when I get inside of the gate, I'll be happy praising my Savior when I get inside of the gate. 